to elude law enforcement officers, battery on a law enforcement officer, possession of weapons, resisting arrest, and he's also got an outstanding warrant for burglary of a dwelling and conspiracy to commit a burglary. So here's what happened earlier today. Detectives from the Lakeland Police Department, the ATF, and FDLE were conducting a surveillance because they suspect he was involved with the shooting last Monday of 11 people in the city of Lakeland. This surveillance was just outside of Eagle Lake. While they were conducting this surveillance, our suspect, Mr. Green, jumped into a white Silverado pickup truck and started to flee. When he fled, at that moment, he was pursued by Lakeland police officers and ATF and FDLE did not pursue at that point in time. They went from Eagle Lake through Winter Haven to Havendale Boulevard. Now, for those of you who are familiar with Havendale Boulevard, you know clearly and unequivocally that it's normally bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. While this is occurring, the captain, Captain Eric Harper, who's driving a unmarked law enforcement vehicle for Lakeland, obviously sees the danger, is trying to pit the suspect and stop him so that we don't have this pursuit on a very busy road. He successfully pits the vehicle and it's just down the road from where I am now. The suspect green hops out of the vehicle and starts running into traffic on Havendale Boulevard. Why he and the captain weren't run over is just the grace of God because traffic was all over the place. Well, our suspect saw that he couldn't get away so he circled Andreas' restaurant. And as he's circling Andreas' restaurant, there's a lady, an elderly lady, who has her car parked there with the doors open. She's meeting with some friends and they're ostensibly going to change or exchange a flower. So she's talking with her friends, hears the pit, sees the guy run, he circles the building, He's trying to get to her vehicle. She immediately recognizes this, slams the passenger door, runs over and tries to slam the driver door when the suspect pushes her off, gets in the vehicle. She tries to open the door and is unable to. At this moment in time, Captain Harper is around the corner, his gun out, demanding that he stop. Now he's seen the suspect carjacks, successfully carjack this elderly lady. The suspect takes off in her car, which is running, drives toward Captain Harper, who shoots six times. After the suspect shot, he comes out onto Havendale Boulevard, weaves through these flower beds, and then crashes over my shoulder into this building. In the meantime, deputies are responding. We uh, are on the scene immediately. We pull the suspect out and start CPR. He's transported to Winter Haven Hospital where he's declared deceased. The investigation is ongoing by our officer involved shooting team that Mr. Haas, our state attorney, put together and that's how we investigate officer involved shootings now. Now that is a rendition of what occurred today. As I always say, any of the details that I've given you are subject to change as the investigation goes on because we're talking to you only two and a half after this event occurred. But I'd like to turn the podium over to our state attorney, Brian Haas. Mr. Haas. Thank you, Sheriff. I want to talk to you a little bit about our, our team that's going to be doing this investigation. This is our task force. Anytime an officer is involved with a deadly incident, uh, we have a task force in the Tenth Circuit, Polk, Highlands, and Hardy counties. And the reason for that is, is we want the investigation to be done transparently, uh, but efficiently, 
and we want the public to have all the answers that they're entitled to at the end. Uh, the team is made up of officers from all over our three county areas. So for example, today, there'll be someone from Hardy County, Highlands County, and various uh, agencies in Polk County. And the goal there is to have folks that are from other agencies also taking a look at what happened today. So uh, once they're done with their work and they've been at it already today working, they will submit their report to me in my office and we will take uh, whatever action is deemed necessary as we would in any other case. So the only other thing I'll say is I'm very thankful that today uh, no other uh, citizens or law enforcement officers were injured and we're very fortunate for that. Thank you. Now, Sam Taylor, the police chief of Lakeland, will speak with you and he can give you some background on to, as to why this event occurred today. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, earlier today uh, and all weekend, as you know, well, let me, let me back up. Last week, uh, 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 Monday of last week, we certainly had a uh, drive-by shooting where uh, 11 people were injured. Everyone's very familiar with that. Uh, detectives have worked on it all week. Uh, they worked on it all weekend. We were certainly able to develop some information that led us over uh, to this address over in uh, Eagle Lake, I believe it is. Um, we conducted some surveillance and uh, came upon this gentleman. And uh, I, I'm not going to be able to go into a lot of detail as to how we got up on him and how we uh, feel like he was involved. I will tell you that uh, we are very confident that he is, in fact, involved. To what extent, we don't know yet. We're still working through that. Uh, we feel like we have a, uh, a pretty good handle on, uh, on what was going on there. Um, I'll echo what the sheriff said and, and uh, what Brian said. Uh, we're, we're fortunate today that no officers were hurt. Uh, that just lets you know the, the violent nature that, that the people that these guys and gals deal with every day. Um, this uh, was something where uh, this guy had a warrant for burglary. We were, we were just trying to arrest him for the warrant in the hopes of uh, and getting an interview with him relative to the shooting that we had here in Lakeland or in Lakeland last week and it turned into, in the, into the pandemonium and the mayhem that you see here. Um, it's unfortunate that he chose that, but be assured that was his choice, not ours. So um, the investigation will continue um, to the extent that I can answer questions, we will, but just keep in mind, as I, as I told you last week, I'm very limited on what I'm going to say and the questions that I will answer because this still is an active investigation. There's still quite a few folks that we need to interview. So with that, I'll turn it back over to the sheriff. How is Captain Harper? Uh, I spoke with Captain Harper. He's obviously shook up. Um, you know, no, no law enforcement officer comes to work every day and, you know, takes their kids to school and, and, and thinks that they're going to get involved in something like this. Certainly it's a possibility. We all recognize that. Um, I asked him two questions. Number one, was he okay? And he said yes. And number two, have you called your wife? And he said yes. So um, it's it's jarring. You know, it's it's uh, I say it's not something that uh, the law enforcement officers look forward to doing, and, and it's uh, the sad part of the job, really. So I don't have any information on her. I, I believe she is. Yes. I'm very circumspect in the way I answer that question. I feel very comfortable that we have uh, very good leads on that we're following up. I'll leave it at that. I just want to make sure, are you saying that this gentleman is connected to the Lake machine? Yes. Oh. And there was, there was no one else in the truck with him? No, not, not that we're aware of, no. Sure, but how long did the pursuit take? Where exactly did the, uh, the officer start following the system? Yeah, the pursuit started at Cooley Road, which is just outside the city limits of Eagle Lake and it came north into Winter Haven and then down Havendale Boulevard. So, you know, that is about a 10 or a 15 minute pursuit. And fortunately, no one was injured in the pursuit for which we're all grateful for. But listen, only the wicked flee when the police try to stop you. And that's what occurred here. Had he simply not run from us, not fled, then none of this would have happened. As the chief said, and it's my phrase, we didn't sh choose to shoot him. He chose for us to shoot him with his conduct. And you're not allowed to run from the police and try to carjack people who have just finished lunch at a restaurant and then drive directly at the police 
and think anything other is going to happen to you. So at the end of the day, we could have taken him into custody peacefully without any problems at all, but he chose for this to be the end. Does this change how you might go after the other potential suspects in terms of what they may be capable of as well? I don't think it does. I think it probably heightens our uh, senses a little bit. I mean, we were already knew that, uh, that we were dealing with some folks that were had a propensity to pull the trigger and shoot at other people. Um, and now we know they have the uh, ability and uh, propensity to, you know, commit violent acts like this. So, yeah. Chief, did you have hard evidence that tied him to last Monday's shooting? Or was it just uh, kind of propensity? That he no, we, we feel very comfortable that he was he was uh, tied to last week's shooting. Is there a specific number of suspects that you're looking for in the investigation besides him? There is. There is. Okay. Can you give us an update on the Wake Forest shooting investigation? Uh, it's uh, ongoing. I'll tell you that we have some very promising leads and some people that we're very interested in following up with. But beyond that, I really don't want to say anything else. Are any of those leads outside of Polk County or are they all Polk County located? I'm not going to answer that. I don't think that's I don't think that's fair to the investigators. They're trying to, to run these folks down. That's the sheriff alluded to busy area right here. Do you stand by the decision to chase? I do, yeah, yeah. I think it's, uh, you know, as the sheriff said, and, he, and he's right, you know, you don't get to, to, to not stop for the police. That's not the way this works, you know. And, and had he just stopped, none of us would be here today. You know, you see the resources that we have out here, and it's unfortunate and sad that a young man made that decision today. To, but this is where, you know, his life ended today because of his decision. So yes, I stand by him. He's been with us 20 years. I'm sorry. Uh, Eric Harper. H A R P E R. Yeah. E R I C. Sure. There was someone over at the mobile station who said that their car was hit by the debris as well. Any details about that? No, but we are going to recreate this entire scene. He. He not only stole the vehicle that he carjacked, but he rammed a vehicle in the parking lot of Andreas's, which also hit the building. And then he came down here and ran through this building. So at the end of the day, he created quite a mess. He made one last bad decision. He won't make any more. And it was his choice to make those decisions. But we're gonna keep the community safe. And once again, we don't choose to chase, people choose for us to chase them. We don't choose to shoot, people choose for us to shoot them. That was totally on him. Okay, thank you very much, have a good day.